Look at this. A lot of Land Rovers don't even get this dirty. Our journey starts this time in the village of Aberfoyle, which sits on the River Forth, just a couple of miles from its source. There's a good sized car park here, and certainly at this time of year, you should have no trouble getting a space. The village has got a petrol station and a co-op, and various pubs and cafes where you can get something to eat. Today, we're gonna to be driving over the Duke's Pass and through the Trossachs to Loch Lubnaig. But before we set off, here's a quick preview of some of the fantastic places we stop along the way. To see more of these and more, keep watching. off one of our previous trips from Aberfoyle but instead of turning right here we carried on straight on towards Stronachlacca and Inversnaid. Click on the card I've put up on the screen now for that video. Oh dear, I don't think that's meant to be there. The roads were certainly very icy earlier on this morning. Just a little bit further along the road there's a sign saying that the roads might not be treated for snow and ice. I don't know whether that's the reason how he managed to end up there but I have had deer run out on me along this road previously. A little lay-by coming up on the right hand side. I'm not going to stop at every lay-by along the way but I will try and point them all out if they look suitable for parking the motorhome. This is a forestry track that I saw on Google Maps that I wanted to have a look at but there's a gate across the road further down so we just carried on. Another little lay-by on the right but a much better place to stop is Three Locks Forest Drive that we're just turning into now. The Three Locks Forest Drive is just over seven miles long. It's accessible all through the year on foot or on a bike but vehicle access is only allowed between March and October. Even through the winter when the route itself is closed, there's still plenty of parking areas available at the entrance and exit to the drive. This is the entrance end and it's a one way loop around. You can see at the side there's plenty of places where you could pull in and stop. One of the great things about it is the entry barrier to the road is locked at 4 o'clock in the afternoon and the exit barrier is locked at 5 o'clock. If you book to stay at one of the sites along the drive, they'll give you the combination for the uh, padlock on the gate. There's a couple of pound charge to access the drive and it's three pound per night to stay in one of the approved places. So it's a real bargain. We came to the Three Locks Forest Drive for our very first trip away in the motorhome when we bought it last year. We stayed in location E, which is where this picture is taken. It overlooks Loch Drunkie, and there are only spaces for a couple of motorhomes, so it's never going to get very crowded. We will come back again later in the year and film some video from here, and I'll link to that in the description once it's done. Passing by a few laybys on the right hand side along this stretch. One on the left and one on the right before we turn into another great place. It's a bit mucky at Three Locks Forest Drive. I think I'm going to need to wash the van when I get home. So this is a little forestry commission pull-in at a place called Leonach, I think it is. Uh, there's quite a few spaces around about where you can pull your van in, obviously if they're free. Some more level than others. The one that the van's in at the moment is pretty level. Nice quiet spot, just off the road. I think you could definitely spend a night in here without any problems. What 
What's for lunch, Eileen? Busties! It's not as pretty as the last spot but there's another huge pull in on the left here and as we head towards Loch Acre there's laybys on the left and the right. Coming down the hill alongside the lock as you can see there's somebody already parked in the first layby but I've got a better one in mind anyway. So a little pull in just off the road at Loch Acre looking across towards Ben Arn which is the mountain over there. I've actually climbed up to the top of there. I'm not particularly fit. I didn't find it too difficult. Just took a slow plod up to the top. Got some great photos from up there, which I'll put on just after this clip. Lovely view across the loch. Right on the road though, so you probably wouldn't want to spend a night here. If you want to see more of my photography you can pop over to my website www.andyhallphoto.com Over there you'll find galleries containing some of my favourite images which are available for sale as prints. Next stop is the car park at the foot of Benvenu. It's a pay and display car park and all day is £3 and in the terms and conditions it does state clearly that motorhomes and camper vans are charged at the same rate as a car, not the minibus rate. It doesn't say anything about no overnight parking so it looks like you're good to go. Almost immediately after coming out of the Benvenu car park we take the left turn down towards Trossex Pier on Loch Catrin. This is where the steamship Sir Walter Scott sails from. Cruises run from the end of March to the beginning of November. So we'll come back in the summer and take a cruise and I'll put up a link to the video in the description once we've done it. It's a pay and display car park at the pier for day trippers but you can also stay overnight in your motorhome or camper van if you want to. The space is equipped with water, electricity and Wi-Fi and there's also shower and toilet facilities available. It's £10 just for overnight parking or £18 if you want to use all the facilities. I'll put details in the description below. Anybody of a nervous disposition might want to close your eyes now. I think it's an important skill to practice when you first get a motorhome is to build confidence reversing using your mirrors and your reversing camera if you've got one. Next stop is the Ben Arn car park but as you can see it's really busy today and didn't see any spaces big enough to take the motorhome. It's a lovely walk up to the top as I mentioned before. This turn off on the left is into the Glen Finglas Visitor Centre. It's quite a large car park. There are lots of walks that begin from here of varying lengths and difficulties, including up to the Glen Finglas Reservoir. On the right here is the car park for Little Drumwood. It's a nice quiet spot where you can easily park up for a night if there's space. And there's a walk that begins here that runs in a figure of eight around the edge of Loch Venneca and into the small village of Brigga Turk where there's a quaint little tea room. It pays to be quite cautious when you're driving along these roads. You get cyclists and runners and pedestrians, even animals on the road that you don't see until the last minute as you come around the bends. Turning right now into the first of two car parks at the edge of Loch Venneca. Not much space in either of them. I would say that of the two, the second one is possibly the slightly better bet with the mount home of the space. It's that guy running again. The timing probably couldn't have been much worse with a car coming from the opposite direction at just the same time as we were passing him. As you can see, there's already another mount home parked in this spot 
One thing to watch out for is that it would be quite easy to end up boxed in if vehicles were parked close by either side of you. It's that guy again. He's passing Loch Venneker Cafe and Boating on the right hand side. I've never been in there but it looks like a nice spot where you could stop for something to eat or drink. A couple of laybys on the right hand left before we arrive at another couple of parking areas in close succession. Bow Castle or Bow Chassel, not sure which, and Kilmahog. I actually missed the one on the left for Bow Castle. That's the pronunciation I'm going to go with. Let me know in the comments if I'm right or wrong. I turned right into the one for Kilmahog, which I think was probably a mistake because uh, it's only very small and it was chock a block. At the end of the road, we make a left turn onto the A84 heading towards Korea Larrick. I wanted to stop along here at the Falls of Lenny. I saw a sign saying that there was a car park in a few hundred yards. It soon became obvious that the distance had passed and I'd seen no sign of the car park. Going back through the video, I can see where it is now. At least I'll know for next time and you don't need to make the same mistake. Hello camper vanners, leave me a comment if you're watching this. That reminds me, if you're interested in touring Scotland in a motorhome or caravan, you might be interested in joining the Scottish Motorhomers and Caravanners group on Facebook. Approaching Loch Lubbernegg now, two parking areas, first one's okay, but the second one at the cabin has got a couple of dedicated motorhome spots that you can pre-book for overnight stays. I'll put the link for booking into the description below. They charge £7 per adult per night and kids under 16 go free with an accompanying adult and they charge a couple of pounds to empty the chemical toilet at the disposal point. home parking spaces here that you can book they're only a few quid a night there's a chemical toilet disposal point there's no electric uh, and there is a water um, fill up point around the back of the little cabin there uh, where they do snacks and, and stuff like that you need quite a long hose pipe to get from the tap to your van but uh, lovely place right next to the lock We stayed here on one of our first trips in the van. Well, that's the end of the trip for this video. I just wanted to say thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please have a look at my other videos in the Scene Scotland in a Mount Home series. Leave me a comment and let me know where your favorite places for wild camping are in Scotland. And remember to like and subscribe. Thanks very much, see you next time.